And this little touch-up gun does really pretty well. Well, howdy folks and uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be kind of a continuation of the last video where we installed uh, this antenna mount here. Uh, we're going to be working on installing a, another radio mount that we're, that's going to double as a basically a mount for, the, uh, for my ice chest. So at any rate, uh, kick back and uh, Enjoy the enjoy the video. We'll get to it here. Okay. One of the first things that we're going to have to do here because we've got to get this this cleaned up. What we're going to actually do is uh, mount the uh, put the radio mount on, get the holes drilled, then pull everything off and uh, get all this rust cleaned up, get some primer on it, and uh, get some paint on it. And then in a day or so, when the paint is fully dry, then we'll go ahead and, and come back and mount all this stuff. But we need to get everything out of the back. Now, we have removed the big box that we had back here um, because we determined uh, that it is not going to... We're not going to be able to uh, put it in and take it out um, with the radio mount and the adapter plate uh, that's going to be mounting on top of it. So we're going to have to do some rethinking about uh, how we have to go ahead and install everything. So, but right now I want to go ahead and get everything cleared out of here so that uh, we've got somewhat of a clean area to work in and uh, we may end up actually throwing some paint down on the on the um, the floorboard here as well leash here is so that uh, I can go ahead and, oh that's where that battery pack went uh, is so that I can put butters in the uh, in the Jeep and it's kind of will help secure him down a little bit when the when the going gets a little rough with him being as old as he is he's not as um, as adept and uh, you know as agile as he used to be so uh, we have to take a little bit more caution with him nowadays I think she's cleaned out well enough uh, that we can go ahead and start uh, getting uh, the bracket located. So uh, I'm going to go grab a tape measure and grab the bracket uh, and uh, we'll get some measurements going and get this happening. Okay, we want this bracket, or actually it's this bracket right here to be the same distance forward from the antenna mount uh, on that side as we've got it on this side. So we're going to take a measurement here and this is measuring right out 
18 and three quarter inches. So we'll go ahead and go to the other side, get that measured out and set at 18 and three quarter inches and, uh, and start drilling some holes. Okay, let's get our 18 and three quarter inches. And that is right there. And now we're going to take our freshly painted spiffy new bracket, set it right there, and now what we want to do is, what we're probably going to end up doing is, uh, I'm going to get a little C-clamp so we can clamp it here to hold it and um, so we can get everything lined up. Okay, we've got a drill motor here and C clamp here. Actually, I think I can use this smaller one. hoping that you're not getting a lot of wind noise because the wind is starting to pick up out here. not wanting to hold very well we need to find something else I'll be right back looking the same as it is on the other side so what I'm thinking it's different the the distance between this mounting bracket for the bows and this edge on the mount is different on the other one but I think that other mount that I have is was probably made at a later date so so we're we're in the right spot so we're just gonna start drilling the hole here and uh we're gonna go ahead and grab a nut and a bolt and uh get this corner secured down and then we'll be able to go ahead and uh get the rest of the holes drilled now when we go do the Final installation on this. Um, we're going to have some backers, just like we did with the antenna, to go ahead and um, help secure secure this better, so that these mounts won't rip out uh, while we're bouncing around out in the desert. one out and we'll 
go get another bolt and put another bolt in there. And notice I'm not bothering with lock washers or anything else like that right now. Everything is in the proper location. So now it's time to finish drilling these holes. and then we have to put uh, the support leg that goes from here down to here in place and then uh, drill for that but we're only drilling we're only drilling two holes here because this hole uh, is at the curvature of the fender and this hole here is going to be for the support leg and I'll go grab that and another bolt and uh, we'll show you what that's all about. got some buggered up threads yeah the closer it gets down to the bottom we're gonna have to find a different bolt up out of the way a little bit 
so I can actually see what I'm doing here. And there we go. We've got all the holes drilled that need to be drilled to get this mounted. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out and uh, get in here with a vacuum and clean some of this crud out of here and uh, get ready to sand this down and uh, put some paint on it. All right, we'll get the old shop back fired up here and Try to get some of these rocks and dirt and stuff backed up out of here. Yeah, we've got some other rust spots down here on the floorboard that we're going to have to take care of as well. I figure as long as we're going to be mixing paint up, we might as well take care of some of this spot on the, some of this stuff on the floorboard. And I think we're going to get in here with a body hammer and uh, maybe try to flatten this back out a little bit. Uh, this is kind of the way that uh, the private parts has been since I've had him, and uh, the previous owner had a big rubber mat uh, that he put down on the floorboard here. And anytime you put any kind of a rubber mat down on these things, all it does, especially in an open vehicle like this, all it does is it gets water underneath that um, that deal, and it creates creates a lot of more a lot more rust issues. And so uh, that was the first thing that I did when I got private parts is uh, yank the rubber floor mats that he had in here out and threw them away. So, uh, at any rate, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, get the get our body hammers out and see if we can't do some massaging to the floorboard here. It's not going to be, uh, you know, body shop quality. Uh, it's not going to be Robbie Layton quality, that's for sure. So, uh, at any rate, uh, I'll go grab those and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, upon further inspection, these raised areas here are actually part of the, the framework uh, on the other side. So these areas here are actually compressed down uh, from where they were originally. So with that being the case, I'm just not going to worry about it. We're just going to clean up the rusty spots and uh, uh, prime it and, and put some paint on it just to go ahead and protect it. I'm going to grab our DA sander and uh, start going at some of these rusty spots. <laughs> All right, now that we have most everything kind of sanded down a little bit, we're going to rinse this thing off with, uh, with some water here. And, uh, and once she dries, we'll squirt some uh, primer on the spots that need, uh, you know, that have bare metal. And... Uh, and then wait for uh, wait for everything to dry up. It's plenty warm enough out here right now that uh, we shouldn't have too much trouble uh, getting this stuff to dry up. And 
and uh, we also have a spot on, uh, between the drivers and passenger seat uh, I don't think you can see it in the camera right now that um, has got some burnt paint on it uh, because of the exhaust the exhaust system on private parts is not stock and um, it doesn't have the heat shield so uh, that's an issue that we're going to be addressing soon but uh, but uh, what's happened is that the heat went ahead and kind of melted the bottom of the little center console thing that I have in here and uh, that's created some issues so There are several different layers of paint that I've sanded through here. Uh, about two or three coats of different primer. And this stuff here, I think, is the original. It's a real dark red primer. So, uh, and I have some of the correct primer for it, but um, I just... Uh, for what we're doing here, we're doing a, you know, basically a motor pool paint job. Uh, and which is just basically touching up and fixing the spots that are screwed up right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and get to a, a complete uh, repaint of private parts at, at some point in time. I, I don't know when, but at some point in time. It's, it's in the works. All right, now we've got it uh, pretty well uh, washed down. We still got a little bit of degreasing to do, so we got some uh, <clears throat> some solvent here. We're just gonna wipe this down with solvent to get up any uh, contaminants, any dirt that we've missed, you know, things like that. Remember that this is not a professional paint job we're doing here. We're just All right, we found another can. It's not exactly the same stuff, but it'll work All right, that should do it for uh all of the exposed metal areas and uh, and things like that so we'll give it uh, give this some time to dry and uh, we'll start getting some paint mixed up okay we're gonna we're using a little touch-up gun for doing this uh, we didn't need to mix up an entire uh, you know batch for a big gun and this little touch-up gun does really pretty well The paint that I'm using is the Gillespie Coatings. It's the 23070 is the paint code. And uh, this stuff is really pretty good paint. It goes on pretty nice. Um, you know, I'm by no means a professional painter by any stretch of the imagination. And, um, you know, it, it has worked well for me. I painted a couple of Jeeps and, uh, you know, World War II Jeeps and a whole bunch of other just, you know, little stuff. Uh, and it's, it's worked really pretty well. The main thing that you got to watch out for with it or that I have experienced with it is don't put on too thick of a coat uh, put on a couple of thin coats with it which is what I'm going to do we'll go ahead and 
put this coat on and then uh, we'll do a second coat probably in another half an hour or so. And there we go. That's that's it for the first coat. Uh, we're going to let this dry for a little bit. And then we'll come back and hit it again. And then uh, leave it overnight so it can dry overnight. So uh, we're not going to go ahead and show you the uh, paint in the second coat. I don't think that's really necessary. I think you guys pretty much got the idea as to what we're doing here. And uh, and then when we come back, it's probably going to be a day or two, and uh, we'll go ahead and get everything reassembled. So uh, that's it for now. Uh, we'll see you probably tomorrow. All right, it is, uh, it's been about 24 hours. We've got the paint in here. I'll show you what this looks like. Oh, trying to keep my shadow out of it, but uh, everything looks pretty good and everything's nice and dry. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get our radio mount bolted onto the sponsor now. Okay, so we've got our mount here. We're going to get it set where it's supposed to be. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take bolts here. and uh, get them started. Now, what we have, you guys can see these, these are little backing plates and these are gonna go on the underside or the back side and it's basically to support, um, get a little bit, give a little bit of support to the, um, to the body so that the body doesn't end up getting ripped out uh, you know, or torn, you know, torn out while you, uh, while this thing is bouncing around. And for some reason, that one is not the right one. I think it may be this one here then. Yep. Gonna end up doing the same thing on the outside rear ones. I 
Well, I don't know why the nuts don't want to start on these bolts. There we go. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that most of this stuff is, is used hardware. And it's fine pitch threads. And the fine pitch threads, whereas they, they offer better... Um, better torquing capabilities they uh, the threads can get dinged up a lot easier now on on these bolts here, normally we would have a, a long um, backing plate, and that's what uh, the one that's on the passenger, or yeah, on the passenger side has. Um, we don't have one of those, but we did have a couple of spares of these, so we're just going to use these. Um, looks like we're going to have to get a alignment bar. I'll be right back. All right. So we're going to end up using these, but uh, we're only going to use one of the holes. get these once I get these completely installed then I'll go ahead and show you how it looks from the back side put in and then we also have to put lock washers on this here now oh boy that did not line up real well looks like I'm gonna have to get back on here with the drill motor and get that hole wallered out a little bit
let's see if we can get the alignment bar to kind of pull this thing down and get it somewhat lined up. Nope. Battery's dead. All right. There we have it. There's the, the mount installed all right now that we've got this thing mounted down we've got to go ahead and get this adapter plate bolted on now this adapter is out of a um, uh, a kit for the driver's side radio mount for an m1009 for the, the blazer but because we're not going to be mounting a, a radio in the blazer like that uh, we've decided to use it here to go ahead and um, help with the, uh, you know, with being able to securely mount the ice chest. We're just going to get a couple of the bolts on here right now. And uh, these will go ahead and... Uh, Good grief, if I could quit dropping the washers would be helpful. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, set the ice chest on. We'll get the seat back where it needs to be. Set the ice chest on and uh, mark where we're going to mount our footman loops. The other thing we've got to make sure of is that uh, these bolts will clear uh, the ice chest. Alright, see it's got plenty of room, plenty of clearance between the seat there. Now let's go ahead and go grab our ice chest. Hey. We are going to have to put two different sets of footman loops on it. And I'll show you why. You can see right here is the slot for um, for a strap to hold it down. It's the same thing on the back side, or on the, the opposite side, excuse me. But sometimes I'll go ahead and mount the ice chest with the lid and the, uh, the hold downs facing outward. But when I'm driving with the um, side curtains in, with the side curtains installed, it needs to be flipped around the other way. And so, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put a set of footman loops 
right here to line up with this side and then set right here to line up with the other side so when I have it flipped around the straps are holding it down straight at any rate uh, so we're going to go ahead and grab our footman loops and uh, start marking this stuff out okay we have the first set of footman loops we've got this hole that's on this end here marked and located so what we're going to do is we're going to go find a freaking hammer and we, we've got it marked here so we're going to take our center punch here mark it and then we'll go in with a 3 16 drill and drill this out Now with that drilled out, we're going to set our footman loop here. And, uh, and get this first hole located, or uh, this first one drilled, or We're going to get this first hole, uh, hole screwed down. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that that second one is in the right location. Mark it. And drill it. the chips away and then find what the heck I did with my box of screws And we're using stainless steel screws and uh, nylon locking uh, nuts to go ahead and hold it down. There we go. Well, we've done the same thing on the other side. Um, we've marked the spot where the the first hole's got to be, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> drill this hole. Hit it with the center punch. Now this one is going to be kind of tough because this one is going to end up going through I think this is yeah this is going to end up going through both uh both pieces so i think what we're going to do is we're going to change that because it doesn't matter if the straps are going straight up and down or out at an angle a little bit so we're going to measure this and that is inch and a half and so we're going to put this at inch and a quarter so we need to redo this. Boy, I'm glad I saw that before things got ugly. We're going to mark there an inch and a quarter. Because I do not want to be drilling through this mount here as well. It does. It's not necessary um, to hold all this in place. Grab 
this one. Perfect. And there we have it. Easy peasy. And there we have it. That's um, all we're going to need to do to go ahead and um, be able to strap the ice chest down uh, and keep it from bouncing all over the place and possibly bouncing out and hitting the puppy dog, which we do not want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and get the get the uh, these other footman loops located. Uh, so that it can be tied down either side and then um, and then I think that that's going to be just about it uh, so we're going to go ahead and time lapse this next bit All right, now we've got it. Uh, got the footman loops down. We're going to go ahead and get this tied down. The straps are a little bit long, but uh, that'll be all right. I think that uh, we've got this system secure uh, down pretty well. We'll go ahead and. Uh, probably trim these straps to length and it does appear that the ice chest is pretty damn close to the driver's seat and it is but uh, it's not going to be, it's not so close that it's going to create a hazard. I've already kind of sat in the, sat in the Jeep and checked everything out to make sure that it's not going to be a problem. You can see the strap right there. And that holds her locked down pretty tight. Now, for those of you wondering what these straps are, these are like a, a pack lashing strap. You can find them on 
you know, eBay or surplus stores or things like that. They're nothing, uh, you know, specific. Um, they're usually used with a, with an Alice pack frame and with a uh, pack shelf attachment to it. So, uh, at any rate, well, that's how I've done it. And uh, your mileage may vary. Oh, any rate, uh, that's going to be about it for this video here. Uh, we still have to redo our load plan uh, because the big wooden box won't fit with the uh, with the plate on it. So uh, when we go ahead and uh, and rework our load plan, uh, we'll go ahead and show you guys that. At any rate, as for right now, uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.